good news for dissatisfied broadband customers. Steph has got it. Good morning. Yes, this is all about your compensation that you get when you've got problems with your broadband or your landline. Let me tell you about it. Morning, everyone. Yeah, every year there are over 7 million cases of customers who've suffered delayed repairs, installations or missed appointments with their broadband or landline. But compensation in the past has only been paid out to one in seven of those cases but from today the rules are changing and Sharon Wright who's the chief executive of Ofcom which regulates the providers can tell us more about this good morning to you Sharon um, tell us a bit about what's going to change today then it is a major new scheme for broadband and landline customers if you're kept waiting for a your broadband line or your landline to be installed or for a fault to be repaired you'll now get your money back without having to fight for it. OK, so how will it work then? If you are someone who's had a delay on their repair for their uh, uh, service, what happens? So if you've been waiting for a fault to be repaired and you've been waiting for more than two working days, you'll get £8 a day for every day after. If, uh, if you've ordered a new broadband line or landline and it's not up and running in time, you'll get £5 every day and more than that, if your engineer fails to turn up on time, you'll get a one-off payment of £25. OK, and, and when you say uh, this money will be coming back automatically, how does it actually work? Do you ring up and then it goes into your bank or do they credit to your account? How does it work? That's right. So obviously you'll need to let your provider know that something's gone wrong. And from that very moment, the clock will start ticking and you should get a credit on your account within 30 days. And it's part of a broader fairness agenda, really. We want to see all customers treated fairly, guaranteed broadband speeds when you take your contract out, providers letting you know when your contract's coming to an end and giving you the best deal possible. So what happens if you ring your provider, say you've got a problem, but they, they disagree with you? What the new scheme means is that that won't happen. So if you're a customer of BT, or Talk Talk or Virgin or Sky, they have now committed to deal with your problem straight away. And that's why the compensation's now automatic. It's a voluntary code that these providers you mentioned have signed up to. Why is it not compulsory? It is voluntary. And the reason for that is it's the fastest way to get money into people's pockets. We've been very pleased that every big broadband and mobile broadband and landline provider has signed up and that's more than 95% of customers today will now be eligible for compensation. So uh, fingers crossed it all goes to plan. What happens if it doesn't and you're a customer who's made the call, you've reported the fault, you're due compensation, you don't get it? If there is a problem, then, then obviously get in touch with your provider in the first instance. But if the scheme doesn't work as well, then Ofcom as the regulator, we will step in. So this is about um, problems with getting things repaired, installations, missed engineer appointments. What about those people out there who are just not happy with the speed they're getting? Every time we talk about broadband, people always talk about the fact that, you know, this up to however many uh, megabits per second and they, they're not getting it. And that's why I talk about a fairness agenda. Just in the last few weeks, we've introduced tough new rules, which mean that when you take a, a contract out with a broadband provider, they have got now to give you a guaranteed speed. And as you say, there are still too many of us who, who don't get a decent speed in the first place. The numbers are coming down. They've halved in the last year. But we are also introducing what we call a new broadband guarantee, which will mean everybody up and down the country will have a right to a decent broadband. Sharon White, thank you very much for your time. That's Sharon there, who's the uh, Chief Executive of Ofcom, the regulator. So many people will be interested to hear that. Um, Steph, thank you very much. Now, loads of price rise, if that's good news, loads of price rises <laughs> kicking in today. Energy bills, prescription costs, and a few more things as well. Steph, you're going to yes, run us through a few it, of these. It's because uh, it's the start of the new tax year in a couple of days. Mm. And so to coincide with that, at the beginning of April, um, quite a few prices tend to go up. But also, the good, I'm going to start with a bit of good news first. Anyone who's on a minimum wage will see the minimum wage go up today. Uh, there's quite a few numbers to throw at you mm. here, but I think it's important for people out there. So if you're over 25, then it will go up to £8.21 an hour from £7.83. If you're between 21 and 24, it's £7.70. If you're between 18 and 20, it's £6.15. And it kind of goes down uh, on a scale, depending on how old you are. So the minimum wage going up, that affects around over £2 million 
people, 60% women, interestingly, on that and those figures okay. as well. Um, but unfortunately, there's quite a few bills going up. So we've got council mm -hmm. tax in England is going up on average by about 4.5%. So uh, just to give you what that is in money, it's about £75 a year if, you're on a, if you've got a bandy house, which is quite common. Uh, water rates in England and Wales are going up as well. They're going up by 2%, which is about £8 on the average annual bill. So not a huge mm. amount, but still never good news to hear bills are going up, is it? Energy bills as well, no shock to hear that they're going up. There's around 11 million people who will see their standard variable tariff going up. And that's to do with the, uh, the regulators' caps on that, which has been lifted. So that's going up by £117 to 1254 a year for your average dual fuel bill. Again, these are all averages, so yeah. you know, don't forget different providers have different rates and different levels, so yours might be more or less and than more. that. Uh, yeah, prescription and dental costs are going up as well. So if you're someone who gets a prescription regularly, that's going to rise uh, to £9 in England. Uh, Wales and Northern Ireland and Scotland actually don't have prescription charges, so that's just an England figure. Uh, your check-up at the dentist as well is going up uh, to £22.70. That's for you, you know, your, your initial kind of... NHS dental checkup that you might have quite regularly. Other things going up to uh, your TV license, car tax. Is anything not going up? <laughs> no, I'm I'm sorry. Just, I can see the list is going. <laughs> Carry on. What I else? Uh, yeah, mobile for uh, your mobile contracts. There's a few providers who are putting them up today. Uh, if you're going on any long haul flights in the future, uh, passenger duty tax is going up as well. Uh, and some TV and broadband packages. Shall I just go now? I can just <laughs> yeah. imagine people at home going, boo. I know, I know. And so they should, because it's a oh, bit rubbish, isn't it? Death. But unfortunately, this is the this time of year, this happens. Let's get Rochelle back. I know, yeah. We no are friends. brilliant. And, and the weather's a bit, <laughs> you are beautiful. The weather's a bit cold this week. Yeah, well. but do you know what? Your bills might be going up, but don't forget you are beautiful.